Let's talk about the three common nutritional deficiencies in sciatica as well as carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, sciatica can really be a pain in the butt, literally. You have this pain that goes right on the back of the leg and it can really affect someone if they're sitting or driving. And carpal tunnel syndrome can be a big issue. And sometimes people go for surgery when in fact, they probably didn't need to do that. So today I'm gonna to discuss three common nutritional deficiencies, okay? And they involve the B vitamins, B1, B6, and B12. So we're gonna discuss um, a little bit on how to differentiate if your problem is more of a B6 deficiency or a B12 deficiency or a B1, but these three vitamins are intimately involved in the nervous system and especially sciatic nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome, which is pain or numbness uh, in your wrist. So I wanna just dive right in. Let's first start with vitamin B6. It's called pyridoxine. Now, there's different forms of B6. Pyridoxine is the inactive form. It has to convert to another form to be active. The active form is called pyridoxal 5-phosphate or P5P. This happens in the liver. But you have to realize how important B6 is in a lot of problems, including the nervous system, because it is involved in over 160 different enzymes. Okay, those are enzyme pathways. So you can have all sorts of problems, but today we're gonna to focus more on the nerve uh, problems that can occur. Now, B6 helps to make myelin sheath, okay? That's one thing it does. Myelin sheath is the coating around the nerve. And when you lose that coating, the nerve stops working. You start having symptoms like burning, numbness, tingling, pain, because that nerve keeps everything going, keeps the nerves flowing. And so the protein that builds myelin, which is a type of fat insulation, is dependent on B6, as well as B6 helps produce neurotransmitters, those nerve communications that travel through the nervous system, which is a little different than hormones. Hormones travel through the blood. As far as B6 is concerned, the two big ones are serotonin and dopamine. B6 is especially important in protecting the nerve integrity, specifically the sensory nerves, okay? More than the motor nerves. So there's two types of nerves, one that controls the muscle movement, and there's also the sensory nerve that has everything to do with pain and different sensations, like it can produce burning pain or numbness, or which is the lack of pain. Anything that you can feel is more of a sensory nerve. And one big one is sciatica, and another one is carpal tunnel syndrome. So I remember in practice, I had a machine that measured how fast the sensory nerves traveled through your arms. It's called conduction nerve velocity testing, and we would check these sensory nerves. And unfortunately, back then, I had no clue about B6 and other vitamins and how they can greatly affect the nerves. So B6 helps increase the conduction of the nerves, the velocity of nerves, how fast the nerves transmit nerve signals. B6 is also involved in the metabolism of the nervous system as well. And B6 can also affect the nerves of the eyes. And if you're deficient, you can get myopathy, which is nearsightedness, which is difficulty in seeing far away. B6 deficiencies are also involved in um, seizures, okay? So if you know anyone that has seizures, you should definitely recommend B6 and ha or have them watch this video. Now, there's a paradox with B6, okay, that I wanna talk about. It's a mystery. Because in some cases, when people start taking large quantities of vitamin B6, they end up expressing symptoms of a B6 deficiency. So that's a little bit of an odd thing, but I'm gonna explain exactly why that occurs. Apparently, these two forms of the vitamin, the inactive and the active, can compete with each other. So let's say, for example, you start taking a lot of, of the precursor, to B6, which is the pyridoxine, you could end up blocking the active form, okay? Creating a deficiency of B6, creating sensory nerve problems. Now, just think about this. The RDAs, the requirements for B6 are very small. It's like 1.4 to 2.1 milligrams, okay? Well, if you ever buy vitamin B6 in a tablet form, it comes in like 
50 milligrams or 100 milligrams or sometimes 250 milligrams. And this could be like 2,000 times more than the RDAs. And most of the time, people don't know the difference between these two types of B6, and they end up taking a lot of the inactive form, and then they end up with the B6 toxicity. They actually start experiencing neurological problems, and they did not connect the dots. So straight off the bat, if you have a B6 deficiency, I'm going to recommend taking the active form, not the inactive form of B6. Now, the other thing you should know is that in about 36% of all supplements sold, you'll see B6 as the inactive version. So you could be unknowingly getting a lot of this B6 and actually creating B6 deficiencies without your knowledge. So how does one become deficient in B6? Well, by taking the wrong form of B6 in large amounts, let's say you have some inflammation in your gut or some type of problem um, with um, celiac or uh, Crohn's, that could be a problem, or maybe you had your gallbladder out. As we age, it becomes more difficult to absorb B6. Certain medications uh, block vitamin B6. Alcohol will do it. Birth control pills will cause a deficiency. Even your genetics. There are genetic variations that can be picked up on a gene test that can cause a weakness within your system in converting the inactive to the active, as well as just the absorption of B6. So in that case, you would want to take larger amounts of the active form of B6 to correct this problem. So you may not be able to get B6 from just your diet in general, depending on what you eat, because um, foods that are very high in B6 are usually uh, animal protein foods, fish, meats, things like that. And of course, if you were a vegan or a vegetarian, you're more susceptible to becoming B6 deficient. Um, also, the form of uh, B6 in plants is not as bioavailable. Now, if you're a smoker, if you're a diabetic, you could be deficient in B6. If you drink a lot of coffee, let's say you drink over four cups of coffee a day, you can be deficient in B6. The next most important vitamin involved with um, nerve problems is B12. I've done lots of videos on this topic. It's very, very insidious because it can sneak up on you. And by the time you know you have a B12 deficiency, potentially it could be too late because it can create some serious damage. But when you think about B12, you want to think about myelin, okay? Myelin sheath. That's that coating I just mentioned that surrounds the nerve and allows the um, nerve impulses to travel. Without B12, you can't make myelin. So, B12 has everything to do with nerve regeneration, with myelin production, and with nerve growth factors, okay? So B12 is very, very important. And I would not recommend taking the synthetic version called cyanocobolamine. I would recommend taking the methylcobolamine, which is the natural form. Now, virtually the same reasons why you are deficient in B6 could be the same reasons why you're deficient in B12, like drinking too much alcohol, being a diabetic, having malabsorption, birth control pills, definitely genetics, which is very, very common. But there's some other things as well, um, like, for example, not having enough stomach acid. How would you know if you don't have enough stomach acid? Well, you get acid reflux, you would get GERD. You may have gastritis. But I think the two main reasons why people are deficient in B12 is either they don't eat animal products, they don't eat red meat, they don't have liver, they mainly do plant-based foods or grains. And the other reason is genetics. I've been diving into DNA recently and, and boy, uh, B12 deficiency is a common problem with so many people. And it's such a simple problem to solve if you understand that methylcobolamine is uh, the form that you want to take. But another B12 deficiency was when someone takes a lot of folic acid, that can create um, a hidden B12 deficiency. I did a whole video on that. And then we have B1. I've done videos on this too. A B1 deficiency uh, usually shows up as peripheral neuropathy, and it's usually involved with diabetes or prediabetes or someone who has really bad insulin resistance problems because B1 is all about um, helping you metabolize carbohydrates and sugar. So the more carbs or more sugar you eat, the more B1 you're going to need. 
to metabolize that. And so that person usually ends up with a B1 deficiency and they start having neurological problems in the bottom of the feet, but they also can have them in the hands. They can also have these problems in other syndromes like sciatica. So that would be a little bit of a, a differentiating factor. Uh, do you have a history of eating a lot of carbs? Do you have prediabetes? Then definitely include B1. But other things can create a B1 deficiency too, like too much coffee, too much tea. But B1 is involved with supplying blood flow to the nervous system. And without that B1, you basically starve off the nervous system, the blood supply and oxygen that it needs, and you can have all sorts of issues. The type of B1 that I would recommend would be benfotamine, which is a fat soluble version of B1. And that will penetrate the nerves about uh, 25% stronger. And it's great for uh, helping with the myelin sheath. B1 also is a powerful antioxidant and it can counter the complications from diabetes, not just in the nerves that go to your muscles, but the nerves that go to your eyes and also other tissues in the heart and the kidney. So anyway, I wanted to bring up your awareness on three really important vitamins involved in sciatica pain that can greatly help you if you start taking them. You can take all three or just narrow down the one that um, indicates more to you. But this information is something that I don't have in some other videos, so I wanted to include it. But there are other causes of sciatic pain as well. And one is that you lost the normal curve of the lower back. And if you have not seen that video, okay, with a simple solution, I put it up right here. Check it out.